Okay, this is Dr. Gregory Sloop, MD, Nutrition Hero number eight. And the reason I've included him as a nutrition hero is because he's a guy who really did a lot of work to figure out how atherosclerosis actually occurs. He's a pathologist. He figured out that atherosclerosis is actually a blood clot. I mean, other persons had put forth that theory ahead of him, but he's done a lot of work to help strongly confirm that theory. He's also done a lot of work to figure out how LDL cholesterol um, acts as a bridging molecule to stick red blood cells together, causing Rouleau formation. So red blood cells should normally just move along here. Let me get some to demonstrate that. Normal red blood cells should just be moving along like that. But what happens with high fat meals, all of them become stuck together like these markers. And now they're kind of bulky and it's hard for them to get through the capillary. And um, that was a tremendously important insight because you'll hear all kinds of lectures, especially paleo, low carbers, and other persons trying to tell you cholesterol doesn't matter. No, it's super important. It's the most important risk factor, cholesterol and hypertension for uh, atherosclerosis of the coronaries and the arteries to the brain. Um, as far as nutrition, um, what else does he do? He does something else that's a little bit weird. He donates blood at relatively frequent intervals, let's say a couple times a year, because it's almost like a woman menstruating. Uh, women, premenopausal woman menstruating lowers her risk of atherosclerosis because it lowers her hematocrit, lowers the number of red blood cells percentage-wise in the blood, <clears throat> which makes her blood thinner like water instead of like a milkshake, and that lowers her blood pressure. In addition, when red blood cells first come out of the bone marrow, they're more flexible, more deformable, so they can more readily pass through a capillary uh, versus they're bulkier and they're less flexible the older they are, perhaps because they're more glycated, they have more stuff stuck to them. And so anyways, <clears throat> so men don't menstruate, but if they donate blood, they can get a little bit of a similar effect. But I, I personally think donating blood is a little overrated. Don't get me wrong, I think there are some physiologic benefits to it potentially, but you got to make sure you know with your doc that your hemoglobin is not too low, your hematocrit is not too low. In addition, I tried doing it once. I felt kind of lightheaded afterwards. I did not enjoy the experience. So if I had to, for some health reason, I would do it. I would make sure you're hydrated first. I was not hydrated first. I just sort of did it on a, on a, I was in a hurry and just went and thought I'd do it and it'd be no big deal, but it kind of was a bit of a big deal. And so what I'm saying is make sure you're well hydrated, you're warm, you know, dress in such a way you can lift your sleeve up. So anyways, um, Sloop did tremendous pioneering work. Here's his book. You know, I've read tons of stuff on atherosclerosis. This is the best book ever written on atherosclerosis. If you really want to understand atherosclerosis, you can't understand it with just this atherosclerosis, lipid cholesterol stuff. That is just a subset of atherosclerosis, and that doesn't really make sense. The, um, the other theories, you know, they're all subsets of uh, the Sloop series. So Sloop has a unifying theory of atherosclerosis. All the risk factors are due to something that thickens the blood. That's called increasing blood viscosity. And anything that thickens the blood makes it more prone to clotting, which is bad because atherosclerosis is just a blood clot. Also, anything that injures the endothelium, the cells that line the arteries, because they normally release a lot of vasodilating uh, chemicals like nitric oxide and prostacyclin. And if those cells are damaged, they can't release nitric oxide and prostacyclin, and the blood will clot. So uh, he's a very bright guy, very easy to read book. Um, and if you're interested in atherosclerosis, you know, you're concerned about coronary artery disease or cerebrovascular disease, this will help you to really understand it and make it more obvious. Because people sometimes will say to me, how can you be so set in your ways and eat in such a healthy way? Don't you want to enjoy life with all this junk food and whatever? And I'm like, no, it's pretty easy. I want to have clean arteries. And this is what leads to clean arteries. And when you clearly understand atherosis and you know that there's a way you can win the game in terms of preventing atherosclerosis, you know, then it makes it easy to do. Just like uh, Esselstyn, his patients understand the importance of maintaining good endothelial cell function and nitric oxide, so he gets 89% compliance on his diet. And I think um, Dr. Sloop's explanations of hemorrheology, you know, the sort of the patterns of blood flow, and he does it in a real simple way. This is an easy book to read. And what is it? It's hardly any pages. What is it we're talking here? Uh, Hundred and twenty pages or something, pretty good print. So, anyways, if you're interested in atherosclerosis, good to know about Sloop and his book.